This is the Tamron 17-70 and this is the Sony 16-55. We're going to test these lenses out and see how they compare by climbing a mountain in the middle of winter in Alaska or it's about 8 below zero with the wind chill. Right there is the Matanuska Glacier out in the Matsu Valley and this mountain right there has a really good look over everything. The sun is just starting to come up and hit the mountaintops, but turn around, you can see some of those. And it's eight degrees. Yay! Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Jake, and I create content to help solo creators on the go. People like me are on the go creating small commercial projects or stuff for here on YouTube. So I test and review equipment here in Alaska. This is Alaska. And I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment. So you can tell better stories and make smart buying decisions. This is Tamron's newest lens. It's 17 to 70 millimeters, which is the equivalent on an APS-C camera because it is an APS-C lens to a 25 and a half millimeter to 105 millimeter focal length which is actually fantastic because it kind of gives you an all-in-one lens for APS-C that you really don't have to change out. The other great thing about this lens is it's a fixed aperture of 2.8 all the way through the zoom range so you get really good low light performance and that is something that has been harder to find on APS-C lenses. Obviously Sony came out with the 16-55 f2.8 last year. That's a great lens. I actually I actually brought one with me to compare it with. The Tamron's it's got a 67 millimeter filter thread, so like all of their other lenses, any uh, ND filters, anything like that, you have that fit your other lenses from Tamron will fit this one as well. And it has Tamron's rapid stepping uh, focus system, which is really quick, really accurate, and takes full advantage of Sony's excellent autofocus systems in their newer cameras. But they're doing something new in this lens that they haven't done in other lenses. It has what they're calling vibration compensation. And it actually works really well. I've been testing this on an APS-C uh, camera. This is the A6400, which has no in-body image stabilization. And the lens does a lot. You can see some of these shots here. All of these were handheld. This is handheld with the Sony G16-55. It's got no stabilization, A6400. It's uh, it's also really windy up here. So this is the Tamron 17 to 70. Same thing, super windy, handheld. Even though you lose 1.5 millimeters on the width on the wide end, you gain a lot on the long end. Oh gosh, that wind is cold. Woo! But you also gain that little bit of stabilization, which if you're on an A6400 makes a big difference. And then if you're on a, something with a sub-stabilization built into the body like the A6600, makes a very big difference. It really does a great deal to help stabilize your image. And that's something that really makes this lens a great thing. Because it's gonna be selling for around $800, it makes this lens a really compelling option for Sony APS-C shooters because you get so much value out of this. Even the Sony G lens that they released with 16 to 55, which is more expensive by a few hundred dollars, does not have uh, any sort of optical image stabilization built into the lens. And then you also get the extra reach with this lens, but you don't lose that much on the wide end. You only lose a millimeter and a half of focal length which yes, does make a difference, but as you can see here, for handheld vlogging style shooting, it's not a deal killer, in my opinion at least. Another thing that is great about this lens is it is weather sealed, and it's built just like all of Tamron's other lenses, so it's built out of this kind of, uh, I don't know, it's some sort of plastic material, but it is really durable. I've used mine for a long time in a lot of really harsh conditions, like this, which it's like eight degrees, and the wind is blowing, so the wind chill is probably actually closer to like minus 10. Um, but it's, it handles, these lenses handle this type of conditions really well. And the fact that I'm out in the snow and snow is getting blown on it because it's windy, uh, I'm not worried about it because it is well weather sealed and a really well built lens, just like all the other lenses that Tamron's been releasing for Sony cameras. Something I do appreciate about Tamron lenses, they're small, lightweight. Granted, this is not that much heavier than the Sony G lens, but the fact that this lens basically covers a whole bunch of focal lengths, you don't have to take any other focal lengths or any other lenses with you really. And it performs well at low light because it's a fixed F2.8 aperture, F2 aperture all the way through. Sorry, my cheeks are starting to freeze. So if I start slurring all my words, it's because we are nearly frozen to death. So here you can see 
This is the Tamron 17 to 70. This is the Sony G 16 to 55. The G is definitely a little bit shorter, not quite as long, uh, but it's very close to the same size, which makes the Tamron actually really nice because you get the extra focal length um, and you get that vibration compensation, which I gotta say, I'm really excited about that because it does a really good job. I was kind of skeptical on how well it would, it would work, but it really, really makes a big difference. And that's the reason I'm shooting with the A6400 is to really showcase how much of a difference it makes. From an image quality standpoint, and I'm sure there will be more videos that will pick apart the image quality to a very fine detail, but for what I've been shooting, for stuff like this, running gun stuff where you're out and about, this lens has been fantastic. The images are sharp, the autofocus is great. It's a uh, really pretty sharp edge to edge even. There will be a few raw images that you can download. There's a link in the description. I've been really impressed with how well this lens has performed, even out here at like 10 below zero with the uh, weather the way it's been, it's performed really well. I think this is easily one of the best lenses you can buy if you shoot on a Sony APS-C camera. Not only is it a great affordable price for the features that you get at $800, you get really fast, really accurate autofocus system, you get very good image quality, you get the vibration compensation, which makes a huge difference if you're shooting things handheld, but the focal lengths that you get between 17 to 70 really covers a lot of range to where you can do handheld selfie stuff Style stuff, but also get a lot of reach out of it. Almost 20 millimeters more than you can out of the Sony G, but you're saving $500, which is a huge deal. That's a huge price difference. The one downside of this lens that I found is that at 70 millimeters, when you're all the way zoomed out, especially wide open, the images are a little soft and you do get a little chroma, but it's not that bad and it's definitely not a deal breaker for me, being that this basically could be the only lens you have on your camera body and you can run around shooting in all kinds of weather, in all kinds of conditions, low light, uh, and, and get great usable images and great usable video. I'm really excited excited to see these kind of performance lenses coming to APS-C bodies now because before, up to this point, it felt like APS-C was maybe a little bit neglected, a little bit forgotten, but after this, I easily say it is not. This is a fantastic quality lens, especially for the price that you pay. Tamron has hit it out of the park, and I have a feeling this lens will be quite a hot item for a while. There are links in the description if you want to check it out. There are affiliate links. They help this channel out. They don't cost you anything extra, um, but great job, Tamron. This lens is fantastic. If you want to see other lenses that are great for Sony cameras, click or tap there. I put together a small playlist. They're some of my favorite lenses. As always, if you have questions, Ask me in the comments below or join my live stream Wednesday nights, 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now we just have a short mile hike, 2,000 feet down the side of this mountain as the sun is setting and it's 10 below zero. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.